Hi everyone and welcome back to Bonnie Astrology. Today we're discussing Jupiter changing signs from Taurus into Gemini, where it will be from May 2024 until June 2025, what it means for us collectively and also what it means for each of the zodiac signs. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up to let me know you like it. Subscribe to the channel for regular astrology content from me and if you want to follow me on any of my socials, they are listed below in the description as well as where you can contact me for a personal read if you want to look a little bit more in depth as to what Jupiter in Gemini is going to mean for you over the coming year. So Jupiter as a planet spends roughly a year in each sign and so when it changes it means that the themes that we're experiencing both collectively and personally change because Jupiter will move from one sign to another and for your birth chart that means if you follow the whole sign system from one sign to another and one house to another. So you may find that this Jupiter and Gemini cycle is going to bring a whole new series of blessings to the part of your chart that it occupies. But Jupiter changing signs mean something for us collectively. Where Jupiter goes, expansion grows. We tend to find that things expand, they grow, they develop where Jupiter is transiting in the sky. Jupiter as a planet is known as the Great Benefic and it tends to bring about growth, where it is. It tends to bring about teaching moments, it acts as a mentor, it brings wisdom. But on the downside, it can also bring greed, excess, and too much of a good thing. There is extravagance. And um, it is also as a planet where you find and how you make your own luck. That's why Jupiter is known as a lucky planet. But we have some degree of participation in that. Jupiter can absolutely bring opportunities to your lap, but what you do with them is totally up to you. So the sign that Jupiter is in tends to show us how we're making luck. It tends to show us what we're learning the most about, where we're the most blessed. And in the sign of Gemini, we may experience a lot of options. Gemini is a sign of duality. It is a mutable air sign. Gemini is the twins in astrology. So you may find that you're getting a lot of options with Jupiter being in Gemini. Now the sectors that this influence in our lives are our communication, our mindset, the way that we think, the way that we process information, the information that we have, and as well as learning and any form of mental stimulation with Gemini energy. Now Jupiter is debilitated in Gemini, but that doesn't mean that Jupiter's a benefic effects are made redundant. Rather, Jupiter being debilitated in Gemini means that it's not as easy for Jupiter to express itself. Jupiter is a bigger picture energy. Jupiter rules Sagittarius, the opposite sign of Gemini. Likes to see things from a more philosophical viewpoint, a bird's eye view, a bigger, uh, bigger picture perspective. What does it all mean? What are the broader themes? Whereas Gemini likes the logic. Gemini likes the facts rather than the overview. And so with Jupiter expanding our information, expanding our facts, expanding how much information we are exposed to and how much detail we are exposed to, this can be a time where it's hard to see the wood for the trees, I believe is the expression, where you're too involved in the detail that you can't see the bigger picture. And that can be a problem in how Jupiter in Gemini expresses our, itself. When we're too focused on the logic, we're too focused on the detail, we're too focused on the information. And as we get into this video, we will discuss, this is going to run into some tension because Jupiter is going to form squares with Saturn in Pisces as well. But in a positive note, we're expanding our information, we're expanding our awareness, and we are understanding the importance of knowing a little bit about a lot of things. Gemini energy, especially this Jupiter in Gemini energy, is going to come in very handy if you want to participate in a pub quiz where you have to have a lot of general knowledge about a lot of different things. Gemini energy tends to know a little of a lot of things. Whereas you see Sagittarius, for example, tends to know a lot about one specific uh, subject. Gemini is the person that you want to go to if you need a quick answer and not to dig too deeply into what does it all mean. Uh, so the positive sense of this is that we can attract our luck, we can attract positivity, we can attract growth through conversation, through talking to each other, through being interested in many different topics, through learning, taking workshops, reading books, listening to podcasts, and overall embracing an energy of curiosity while Jupiter is in Gemini. 
The themes that can come up while Jupiter is in Gemini is of course expansion when it comes to communication, how we communicate, whether or not there are going to be advancements with our phones, specific apps developed to communicate, Gemini energy with the fact that it's forming a trine to Pluto and we have this air sign connection, it can be a time where maybe there are new uh, outlets online to express ourselves, to say what we think, to communicate, to connect with other people. There can definitely be a lot of tech advancements under this time, particularly pertaining to um, oral conversations, putting our words out there, putting our thoughts out there. So as I say, you may see a new app that is developed that helps us communicate something surrounding maybe telephone calls, podcasting apps, maybe new ways of putting your information out there with the trine to Pluto in Aquarius, which is humanitarian and is notoriously focused on fighting the system that maybe doesn't have ad revenue, maybe is not answering to big corporations. There can be things like that come up with Jupiter in Gemini. And similarly, there can also be transport developments. Public transport may improve under Jupiter in Gemini, whether that is through train, through bus, People might be more inclined to take short vacations, short trips, city breaks while Jupiter is in Gemini. More likely to get a train somewhere, a bus somewhere than a plane, for example. People might be more focused on staying a little bit more local. And interestingly too, Jupiter and Gemini can be really great for getting to know your neighbours and becoming more... Uh, connected to your neighborhood, being more community based, getting to know your neighbors, having neighborhood events, having neighborhood, um, making very solid connections through your neighbors, maybe connecting to people that you wouldn't ordinarily have known before. Sometimes, depending on where you live, it can be unlikely that you get involved in your local community or get to know your neighbors. But Jupiter and Gemini can bring a lot of expansion through those things and being more involved in your local community. It can also be a great time with Jupiter being the ruler of Sagittarius and in the sign of Gemini, which are both signs associated with learning, to learn a new language. Apps like Duolingo, I think it's called. Um, I hope I'm not having a doula peep moment. A du Duolingo, I think is the name of the app, with the green bird that teaches you different languages. You can tell I don't have this app yet. But more people focused on learning different languages uh, can be a theme under Jupiter and Gemini. It is a great time to go to a course or a workshop to learn something new, especially if it is going to stimulate your mind and it is going to take a lot of focus and a lot of note making as well. Um, local tourism can also thrive. You may notice that where you live, people are traveling from shorter distances to become part of, um, to learn more about local communities, maybe learn more about your home country, your home state, to vacation within your local state or within your local country. And you may notice that tourism is improving. People are more likely to want to be tourists under Jupiter in Gemini, particularly to learn more about the places that they're going to. So taking bus tours, for example, is those are areas of businesses that are probably going to thrive while Jupiter is in Gemini. Of course, under this Jupiter in Gemini transit, we will also see expansion and development when it comes to the media and journalism, news outlet. Now, sometimes Jupiter, where it goes, it expands whatever it touches for better or worse. And in this case, there may be too much information. People might want to do do social media breaks, people might be more inclined to realize the negative consequences of watching too much of the news, getting too much information through social media and being overstimulated with Gemini energy. That is one of the downsides of Gemini energy, where one can be overstimulated and overwhelmed. And consequently, with the squares to Saturn in Pisces and it being an energy of breaking illusions, there can potentially be big consequences for media outlets, journalists and uh, the news that are perhaps false, putting things out there that are not true or are not based in fact, because Jupiter really wants the facts in Gemini. Another positive spin of this, though, is that this can be great for book releases, writing, podcasts. We're probably going to see a lot more podcasts pop up with Jupiter and Gemini. We're probably going to see a best-selling book that everybody is reading. We're probably going to see that there are more Gemini people coming to the fore or people who maybe have Jupiter in Gemini natally. 
And it certainly does seem to manifest quite literally with people who have it. So in terms of great information, we see people like Stephen Hawking. In terms of writing, we see J.K. Rowling. In terms of rapping, we see Kanye West. And in terms of journalism and the media, we see Oprah. These are people who have Jupiter in Gemini and have used it to their advantage in different ways. And these may be people who are more in the news under the Jupiter and Gemini transit, but similarly, we may see people who have sun, moon, or rising in Gemini being the people who really come to the fore under this particular transit. Do watch for gossip though, because it's gonna be very tempting with Jupiter and Gemini to get involved in it. And with Jupiter being a planet that expands things, things can get very big very quickly. Uh, a lie can get halfway around the world before the truth has a chance to put its pants on or something to that effect. But that could be very Jupiter and Gemini based. Now, as I said before, Jupiter being debilitated in Gemini does not mean that this transit's positive influences are made redundant, but there is some tense energy coming in from Saturn in Pisces. So Jupiter is going to form a square with Saturn in Pisces on the 19th or the 20th of August, depending on where you are in the world, and the 24th of December. I don't know why these transits really love getting together around the holiday season where people are with their families, but it seems for the last couple of years there have been Last three years, there's been some very tense transits around that time of year. But the square is between Jupiter and Gemini and Saturn and Pisces. This can show the downsides to Jupiter in Gemini. So Saturn wants us to have boundaries. Saturn wants to set in place some restrictions. It brings about issues and consequences when it comes to authority and authority figures. Jupiter wants to expand, wants to grow, and Saturn tends to want to restrict or uh, place boundaries um, in place. Jupiter is more boundaryless, likes to expand, likes to roam free. So the different themes that can play out here, as I said before, gossip. Saturn in Pisces can be notoriously insensitive because Saturn tends to restrict where it goes. Saturn, um, Pisces is a very sensitive energy, very sensitive. It's one of the most sensitive signs of the zodiac. So when Saturn is there, it tends to restrict sensitivity at times. Now the square to Jupiter and Gemini means that gossip or what you say can really hurt the feelings of others and it can be a very insensitive square. So in August and in December, you can notice a bit of tension when it comes to hurting other people's feelings or people hurting your feelings. When it comes to knowledge flexing, wanting to be seen as the most intelligent person in the room, wanting to have all the facts, wanting to have all the information. Knowledge flexes can really backfire at this time. People who feel that their intelligence is based on their ability to be logical or skeptical can run into great conflict at this time with people who are more spiritually or emotionally intelligent. There can be that type of dynamic playing out tensely with the square to Saturn in Pisces. And really different people have, depending on your own Mercury placement, you can find different approaches more intelligent than others. So everyone's uh, opinion on what is considered intelligent is a little bit different depending on your Mercury sign. So for example, someone who has Mercury in Gemini would perceive someone who knows a little about a lot of things uh, to be the most intelligent, someone who has all the facts, someone who really uses their logic. Someone who has Mercury in Pisces might view someone who's more emotionally intelligent as the most intelligent person in the room. It really depends on your Mercury placement, which is funny, but it can play out this way as that someone is trying to flex that they have more information, they're more smart, they're more smart, they're smarter because they have more logic and uh, skeptical undertones to their arguments. So that can be one way that this is challenging and indeed trying to flex all the information or knowledge that you do have against someone else who maybe has a different approach can absolutely backfire or be a source of tension. The square to Saturn and Pisces makes me also feel, as I said before, that the media can come under scrutiny for its false information, elusive information, ambiguous information with this Saturn in Pisces transit. And people may also, from a mental health perspective, with Pisces and Gemini both being involved, Pisces is the 12th house ruler. Pisces is associated with the 12th house, which is our 
subconscious and very associated with our psychic um, psychic and psychological well-being Jupiter is in Gemini is going to associate the mind with this and mental health is going to be a big part of this so perhaps the consequences of access to too much information is going to come out at this time and its effects to mental health and mental well-being and people may be more inclined en masse to do social media blackouts to come off social media for a while more and more people may actually leave it in search of better communication face to face believe it or not with Jupiter in Gemini because Gemini are the two twins face to face this square from Saturn in Pisces to Jupiter in Gemini uh, sorry, I just saw a bunny go past the window and it was really cute. This square from Saturn and Pisces to Jupiter and Gemini can be challenging to communication because it is focusing on the facts and as a rather well-known media journalist with the moon in Gemini once said, facts don't care about your feelings and this can be the way that some people are operating under this particular square. It can also be a time when people are saying too much. You look at folk like Kanye West who get in trouble for what they say. Quite a bit comes into the Jupiter and Gemini mix. Uh, and we may also find some reality checks or laws put in place when it comes to social media, media outlets, etc. Quite early on in the Jupiter in Gemini transit, Jupiter is going to be forming a trine with Pluto in Aquarius. Now this is going to be felt late May into early June, but on June 3rd is when this is exact. Now trines are positive flows of energy between the two planets. So happening in the air signs, a lot of this is to do with information, but it's also to do with social interaction. Trines to Pluto tend to bring about positive transformations and Jupiter can bring this about on a large scale. So Jupiter being in Gemini that can bring us more information, it can bring us more facts that we need. Uh, the trine to Pluto in Aquarius can mean that we're getting this information that helps us transform or we are transforming the way that we think, the way that we process information. And with this link to Gemini and the mindset and Pluto being a psychological planet, it is going to help us find some sort of transformation, hopefully when it comes to mental health advancement, when it comes to the well-being of our brains, when it comes to the well-being of our mental state. There can be some perhaps information that comes to light. There can be some... Um, information that comes to us that helps us know what to do for the best, what changes that we need to make and changes to the psyche. And this can also be a positive turn in terms of humanitarian efforts, in terms of going against the status quo, in terms of the power of the people. Perhaps the people come into information that was withheld for them. Perhaps people are coming into more information on humanitarian matters, or perhaps we are seeing a positive change thanks to social media. Because obviously with Gemini, we're going to see the duality of anything. We're going to see the positive, we're going to see the negative, because everything has both. And so in this case, this may be an example where the media or social media or information online, having too much information actually helps us make the changes, and particularly on a social and societal level. Whereas the squares to Saturn and Pisces can be where we see negative consequences of having too much information without feeling. A good way to see this play out is that if you've ever had an experience where you have been emailing someone or texting someone and you feel the tone is not great and you sort of have this these feelings build up about this person if you're starting to think they feel a certain way when in reality the way that they're communicating in their mind might be going completely differently. You can have two very different voices going on in your heads as you're writing something to the other person and miscommunication and misunderstandings can happen and then you speak face to face and you realize there was actually no issue. That can play out quite a bit while Jupiter in Gemini is squaring Saturn in Pisces, as I say, particularly with knowledge flexing and also with insensitivity and a focus on logic. Now, as I said before, Jupiter, where it is, it brings us luck. So being logical will be a good thing under this transit, but it doesn't mean that you have to throw emotions or spiritual practice out the window. And one of the best ways that you can utilize Jupiter and Gemini energy is actually by tuning into the breath and doing breath work. That is an industry alongside, you know, writing, podcasts, communication, media, 
transport, uh, those are the type of industries that are going to grow. Breathwork may become exceptionally mainstream under the Jupiter in Gemini transit, focusing on the breath, on breathing. And you may also notice when it comes to songs, when it comes to movies, there can be focus uh, focus on the word breath or breathe. There can be focus on twins. There can be focus on duality with Jupiter in Gemini. So I'm going to look up some pop culture moments from the last time that Jupiter was in Gemini. And the one that jumps right at me is the fact that Gossip Girl was actually revealed and that is just the most Jupiter and Gemini thing. We learned who Gossip Girl actually was, a show that centered around gossip, which is a Gemini theme, around communication through a phone, communication through blogs, uh, spilling other people's secrets, basically a very Gemini topic. So the fact that the Gossip Girl themselves, if you haven't seen it, was revealed under the Jupiter and Gemini transit. Seems like no coincidence to me. And similarly, Pretty Little Liars was getting exceptionally popular on television, which is a show surrounding four girls being tortured by the phone, by this mystery assailant, but very focused on their phones going off texting, which is again a very Gemini theme as well. Another song that was very popular under the Jupiter and Gemini transit was actually Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen. A song that centers around being telephoned, which is also a Gemini theme as well. And this really took off on social media. The Hunger Games was a very popular movie franchise at this time. And Jennifer Lawrence, who was the star of that movie, gained a lot of popularity. She actually has a Gemini moon. So just to summarize the positives for Jupiter and Gemini, learning, getting involved in your local neighborhood, better times with siblings, local travel, communication advancements, having more information, learning about a lot of things, wonderful books, great podcasts, great for chatting and having conversation, breath work, and also a lucky color associated with Jupiter and Gemini is yellow, which is why I'm wearing this today. The negatives can be gossip, um, over stimulation, being aware of too much, having too much information and not seeing the wood for the trees. I think in America, the phrase is not seeing the forest for the trees. But another date to pay attention to, or dates rather, is that Jupiter will retrograde in Gemini from October 9th, 2024 to February 4th, 2025. And this is where we start to review the information that we are receiving, that we have received, and review the growth and development and expansion in our Gemini house. And speaking of our Gemini house, I'm going to get into now what it means for each of the individual zodiac signs. The timestamps are listed below. I always suggest that you watch your ascendant sign for the most accurate astrological predictions, but you can also watch your sun and moon. And of course, it goes without saying, but the signs most blessed through Jupiter and Gemini are going to be Gemini, Sun, Moon and rising people. But wherever Gemini is in your chart, if you have a Gemini placement, if you have a Gemini angle, you will find blessings with Jupiter going through your sign and your Gemini house. We all have one. So that is what I have for this Jupiter and Gemini video. I hope you find this helpful. As I said before, if you do enjoy this video, do let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy it. Subscribe for regular astrology updates. And as I say, my social media is listed in the description. And if you want to contact me, my information is also there as well. I hope you all have a very blessed Jupiter and Gemini transit and I will talk to you soon. Hi Aries, welcome to the Jupiter and Gemini forecast for your sign. So Aries, this transit for you is going to bring a lot of favorable energies when it comes to your local community and your everyday activities. So what that means is that you can find you're getting a lot of blessings and expansion within your local neighborhood. Whether that is that new neighbors move in that you really like, whether it is that old neighbors that you don't like so much move out, it can be a case where you are more bonded and finding your local neighborhood or community be community to be a source of enjoyment. So that can be that, as I say, you meet neighbors that you really like, you go to more parties in your local neighborhood, you find yourself more actively engaging with your community you find that you are more of an active participant in your local community, whether that is that you're joining the Neighborhood Watch or the PTA, whatever it is, you may find 
that your local neighborhood is a source of fun. There can be more fun events taking place at this time too. Now it can also be that you're taking more workshops. Uh, with Jupiter going through the third, a lot of the time we can take workshops that really expand our knowledge and our wisdom. In the third house, it gives us facts and details, but because Jupiter rules your ninth house, you may find that you're learning more details to help you with your bigger picture perspective. So say for example, you're at university, you might be deciding that you're going to take uh, an additional course to learn a language. So say your university has different workshops, uh, short courses available, you might be wanting to avail of those, or you might be taking more workshops in your workplace, uh, taking more training seminars. Some of you, because Jupiter rules your ninth, you may even be teaching yourself, or if you are a teacher, this is an incredibly favorable period, particularly if you're in elementary education or you teach young children. This can also be a time when you get a car. Some of you can get a new car at this time because Jupiter rules Jupiter in the third can bring about a new car. Sometimes it can be getting a bigger car than what you already had. So say you had a mini, you could get a Jeep under this transit or just get a new car that is more functional for you, particularly if you have trips in mind. And speaking of which, this can also be a really positive time to take trips, especially if they are, you know, in your local state, in your local country. Rather, this, this favors short term and short distance travel. So city breaks uh, in your uh, local, well not even, it doesn't even have to necessarily be your local town, but it can be your state or it can be your country. It's, it's more about exploring the country that you're already in a lot of the time with the third house being in play. Uh, it can also be a time where you really want to expand your mindset. You want to learn a little about, about a lot of things. Sometimes it can be a little overstimulating. So you may notice your thoughts running away with you or you might find yourself even a little bit more easily distracted when you're trying to learn something. If you're trying to go too deep in it, it's not necessarily too favorable for research. It's more favorable for learning a little about a lot of things. So do watch out for social media doom, doom scrolling, uh, doom scrolling. Uh, or just finding yourself taking on too much information to the point you burn out mentally. With Jupiter going through the third, it can be that overthinking can take over, especially as Jupiter has a traditional rulership of your 12th house of the psyche and of your subconscious and letting go. You may notice some thought patterns that you need to let go of and you might also really understand and ex experience Aries, the power of positive thinking under this transit in particular. Now it is going to be forming squares with Saturn in your 12th house and Saturn going through the 12th house for you in the long term is really about setting better boundaries in place when it comes to your healing journey or when it comes to your subconscious and that means that you may be more inclined to work with a therapist or work through some past traumas or some past difficulties. You may be more likely to try things that really go into the subconscious like EMDR therapy or shamanic journeys or anything that is going to really take you deep into your subconscious mind for you to heal and process things from the past. And with Jupiter in the third coming in and the squares happening in August and December of this year, you may notice that you're really having to set some boundaries in place when it comes to the information that you're getting or how much information that you're getting and how that can actually be harming your healing journey. Some of you, I think for a lot of you, it, it does look like a social media break for you, taking some time away from the internet, wanting to do a social media detox. For some of you, it could be that you're really having this battle between uh, the logical side of your brain and the more creative spiritual side of your brain and trying to marry the two could feel a little bit difficult in August and in December. You might not necessarily be so sure what you believe in and it could get a little bit confusing, perhaps again due to too much information. So say for example you could be you know having, you could be really enjoying a a newfound relationship to the divine and then you could read a book like The God Delusion and then you could be torn in two different worlds in terms of your thinking. That can be one way that this square could play out for you. It really does seem to be a lot to do with your mental health and your spiritual health and having good solid healthy boundaries in place 
It can also be a time where maybe some information is exposed to you that you weren't aware of uh, that can, it can be a lot of information I think. There could be some secrets come out that you maybe weren't anticipating or expecting in August or September or news that you did not know things that were happening behind the scenes that maybe you weren't aware of. Uh, it's also to sort of remedy that energy, it might be a really good time to do a dream journal, to write, to journal in general. You're going to find a lot of key insights come out the more that you write with Jupiter going through the third house. And if you do want to start a podcast, write a book, write a poem, all of these things are favoured while Jupiter is in the third. Let's get you a tarot card for this transit Aries. Ah yes, so we have the Ace of Swords. That's pretty perfect actually because it's all about clarity, mental clarity. So this card, it says awareness and insight, epiphany, clarity, force, decisive, communicate. This is obviously all about communication in this house. Ideas, compel, focus, truth and vision. I think a lot of you may also be able to speak up for yourselves in ways you weren't before or speak about things you've not been able to speak about before with this particular transit. There could be some things in August and December where you really want to get something off your chest because you feel as though it is maybe keeping you stuck in some way and you want to articulate it to others. The negative sides of the Ace of Swords can be misinformation, blocked communication, clouded judgment, redirect and hostility. So there can be uh, there can be a time period particularly around the retrograde potentially where you are rethinking communication or you're having to redirect a writing project or uh, something that you have been learning you might have to rethink it in some way shape or form Aries but that is how this transit may play out for you I hope you have a blessed one and I'll talk to you soon hi Taurus welcome to Jupiter in Gemini for your sign so Taurus, Jupiter is now going to be transiting your second house of wealth, of money, of your income, of your values, your possessions, and your financial affairs in general, but also self-confidence, self-value and your priorities. So Jupiter going through the second house, it goes without saying this can be a wonderful transit to expand financially. This can be when you get a raise. This can be when you get a significant bonus. Your income goes up. You're earning more money. Uh, you could be earning money from at least two different ways, Taurus, for some of you, because Gemini is the sign of the twins. It's duality. So there could be a couple of different sources for you. There could be some different options. Some of you could be making money through writing because this is Gemini energy. But it can also be making money through teaching, communications in general, although it does not have to be. It can certainly be that case. Now, this can be a time, yes, absolutely, where you're able to make more money, you're able to earn more. But it can also be a time where you spend more. And if you don't find yourself putting away a bit of money that you're making, you can leave this transit with less because you have spent as much as you've been making. So the best advice I can give at the start of this transit is to create a savings account, particularly in June, because if you open a savings account under a Jupiter in the second transit, you're more likely to save money that little bit quicker, uh, you're likely to prioritise it more, you're likely to have more opportunity to pay into it and just put it away as you make it so that you're not spending it all if you can. But this does tend to be a time when your finances become a bit more blessed than they would ordinarily. And you can see part of that may be because you see more opportunities to make money or you have more options when it comes to making money, Taurus. And it can be a time as well when you accumulate more stuff because you're buying more things. And so make sure as Jupiter does tend to prefer spaciousness, try to make sure that you are, um, if you're buying a lot of new things that you're selling the old stuff or stuff like that, you know, just to make sure you don't feel completely crowded by things by the end of it. It's just some practical advice with Jupiter in your second house. And uh, it can also be a time when you find yourself receiving nice gifts from other people or you find yourself simply more in the moment with the everyday 
material pleasures of life, whether that is a really good ice cream or whether that's a really nice espresso in the morning or whether that is uh, buying yourself flowers every week as a treat. You can find that you're more at one with the things that you have, what they represent, what bit of joy that they give you. It can be a wonderful transit for gratitude for what you have as it tends to multiply your blessings, the more grateful you are for the things that you already have with this particular transit. But it is it is very favorable for financial gain, saving more money, making more money, and also increased self-confidence after your Jupiter in the first transit as well. Now it is going to be making squares in both August and December to your 11th house. So you could find that in August and December, you could potentially be at odds with friends or a group of friends, possibly when it comes to your values. You might have to put some boundaries in place with your friendships, your groups, your teams, the causes that you are part of, the teams that you're part of, the friendships that you have. You might have to put in place some boundaries or restrictions with them when it comes to potentially differing values, differing priorities, or perhaps even terms of your financial system, uh, your financial setup. So say for example you've just had a baby and your group of friends go on holiday every year at a certain point and they think you'd be ready by then but from a financial standpoint you don't feel that you can do it. You may also feel that you just have other priorities now and you're having to put your other priorities first and there can be a little bit of perhaps tension whether it is outward or not as both these times one of the planets is going to be in retrograde. So Saturn will be in retrograde in August meaning that your friends, your teams, where you're having to put boundaries in place potentially even to make a better future for yourself, those can be felt more inwardly uh, whereas in December it'll be Jupiter that's retrograde, not Saturn. And that can be a case when you're actually reviewing your finances and your values and seeing if maybe you could change something for the sake of a group. But it feels as though for a lot of you Taurus there could be a little bit of a clash when it comes to maybe financially saving for the future or your financial priorities or even just your values with your groups, your friends and things like that at Taurus, there is a potential for that. Um, there does seem to be around the 3rd of June when Jupiter forms its trine to Pluto in your 10th house, that there may be some financial expansion coming from an increased position of authority in work or by being favoured by your boss in work or the changes that you're making professionally. Maybe some exposure for you is going to help you increase your finances or financial opportunities, Taurus. So I'm going to pull you a tarot card for the Jupiter in Gemini cycle for your sign and see what comes up. So we have the Queen of Cups, which is about being in flow and in touch with your feelings. Now obviously this is going to be, Jupiter does rule your 11th house as the traditional ruler of Pisces. Jupiter also rules for you, Taurus, your 8th house both very, whether we have the 8th house energy or the Piscean energy, both very intuitive, both very feeling. And I feel for a lot of you that you can really trust your intuition when it comes to your finances, when it comes to your income. I feel as though you can really trust your intuitive hunches or your deep feelings when it comes to not only your values and your priorities but also how you make money the way that you make money it seems like for a lot of you it might be quite heart centered with this particular transit or you may be trying to bring more heart into it potentially or you may be making more money through your creativity that's another way that this could play out for a lot of you but that is what i have for you taurus i hope you have a beautiful transit and i will talk to you soon Hi Gemini, welcome to the Jupiter in Gemini transit. So you're going to love this because this is going to really focus on the blessings and the luck that can come to you. Now, of course, it goes without saying that on one hand, Jupiter can bring opportunities to you. 
It can bring wonderful chances, it can bring wonderful opportunities, meetings, great positive lucky energy can come towards you but it can also be a transit where you find that you're really focused on making your own luck. Whether that is that you're more open-minded to opportunities, whether it is that you are raising your vibration, you're thinking more positively and things are just aligning that bit more for you Gemini. Uh, and I have to say I'm really happy for you guys because you had Jupiter in your 12th house alongside Uranus and I think for a lot of you there could, have been, there could have been surprise endings, grief, shocks, having to heal alone, having to develop things alone, maybe feeling quite lonely at times. And now we have Jupiter in your sign which is saying I'm back, I'm back in the world, I want to explore, I want to expand, I want to adventure. And your approach to life might simply be more optimistic, it might be more gregarious, more hopeful, more adventurous, more joyous. And uh, you might feel better about yourself and have more self-confidence. Now, one thing I will say is that you should try and track to see, and you can do this with an astrologer, but it could also be worth you, you know, looking up to see when this happens. Uh, AstroSeek is a very good time to check it, but when Jupiter actually crosses your ascendant, to the degree. Uh, you may notice that you encounter some sort of exposure or publicity or you find yourself unexpectedly in uh, being appreciated I think and on a wider stage for who it is that you actually are Gemini. You might find that you are uh, getting some sort of recognition and the reason that I say this is because Jupiter traditionally rules your 10th house of career and Jupiter also rules your seventh house of others relating. So it might be that you find yourself getting some sort of fame or recognition when Jupiter crosses your ascendant. That'll be at different times for each of you Gemini risings, but this can bring a lot more recognition and visibility to you as well, because people tend to see you more as larger than life. They see you as having a good time, wanting to have new experiences, to try new horizons. Now, a lot of people say that you can expand physically in this sense. So I don't really want to get into weight because I don't think that Jupiter going through the first house should be really associated with weight changes. Um, it can be, but you know, that a lot of reasons can come up for that. One of the reasons that I will say is possible is because a lot of you Gemini Risings could actually experience a pregnancy. Jupiter tends to expand the body in that way sometimes, especially if it's something you really want because you'd be excited about, joyful about. That can be one way that Jupiter transits the first house in terms of physical expansion. But it can also be, um, changing your style. Perhaps some of you are rocking a more bohemian style or you find yourself picking up more items of clothing when you travel. Or it can be that you're feeling a little bit more experimental with your hair or what you wear and things like that. Uh, Gemini. Those can be things that come up for you under this particular transit, particularly when it comes to your hands, as Gemini is a sign that represents the hands. This can be getting a very beautiful pair of gloves or rocking different types of gloves or rings as well can be something. Particularly for some of you, as Jupiter rules your seventh house of relationships, some of you may be, you know, getting a really big engagement ring or getting a... Um, you might now be wearing a wedding ring or something like that under this particular transit. Uh, it can be as well for a lot of you that in August and December, there is a bit of tension when it comes to you wanting to explore, have fun, be untethered, be free, and your commitments and your responsibilities when it comes to your career, when it comes to maybe a boss, when it comes to your professional presence. There can be a lot of slow moving, heavy, committed, responsible energies in your career sector. And sometimes this can be really good. It can be the type of commitments that you appreciate because maybe you have a very significant promotion. Maybe not you're now running your own business. These can be the type of professional commitments that you enjoy. Um, I always say that whenever Saturn went over my midheaven in my 10th house, I became an astrologer professionally. Uh, having it always, having it been always a hobby of mine, I had a career change a career uh, redirection and it was a lot more responsibility because I was doing it on my own but also a lot more fulfilling. Now because of the squares to Jupiter 
You may find that you want to be more carefree and joyous, but you do have these new responsibilities, perhaps from self-employment, perhaps through a boss, perhaps through promotion, or perhaps just, you know, be embarking on a professional career. And uh, you're having to figure out how to balance the two. That can be something as simple as saying, okay, I love this job, but I'm going to take a sabbatical for a month. Or it can be, I... I'm feeling really quite overwhelmed. I'm committed to this, but I'm going to take two weeks off to travel or something like that. You know, focusing on how you can connect the two because with squares, you have to find some way to connect the two. You can't go in favor of the other. You have to find a way to satisfy both. So another thing to point out, Gemini, in terms of travel or even having some sort of spiritual or religious experience can be the 3rd of June when Pluto in your ninth house meets Gem uh, Jupiter and Gemini in your first. You might be having some sort of a spiritual experience, spiritual epiphany, clarity. You might be having a moment where you realize what it is that you trust in, what it is that you believe in, where your faith is, where your, your journey when it comes to faith and belief systems is changing. And this can make you feel really excited. It's quite a positive one, but you might be noticing some changes there. Some of you might also be really enjoying whatever it is that you're studying or realizing that you want to take a new path of study around the 3rd of June as well. But let's get you a tarot card for the Jupiter in Gemini transit. Please, please remember that you are more lucky. You are under an auspicious transit. Make the most of it. Stay open to opportunities. Try as much as you can to be optimistic to be hopeful because it is a very exciting time for you and you know depending on other transits in your chart sometimes it doesn't always feel as prominent as it is if you have other harsh transits going on but it's still there to be enjoyed and you still need to you know make the most of it that you can with Jupiter. So let's get you a card Gemini. So we have the King of Wands, which says natural born leader. So for a lot of you, I feel you're really stepping into your own energy, Gemini. You're feeling very self-sufficient. You're feeling, maybe a lot of you are feeling entrepreneurial with Jupiter traditionally ruling your 10th. You're feeling successful, passionate, creative. You're a visionary. And I think a lot of you are now into an energy of creating the best life for you, which is very exciting, Gemini. That is what I have for you and I'll talk to you soon. Hi Cancer, welcome to the Jupiter in Gemini transit for your sign. So Cancer, Jupiter is the planet of luck and expansion and growth. And the 12th house is the house of solitude, hiding, reflection, retreat. It can be your subconscious, it can be your fears, it can be worries, it can be letting go, it can be grief. There's a lot of things in this that may not necessarily make you feel outwardly so excited. <laughs> but there's actually a lot of positives in this. So Jupiter going through the 12th house, it does tend to expand what's there. If there is anything hidden away within you that you haven't been able to look at, you may find that now is the time where you will look at it. You will find your greatest growth and your greatest development, particularly spiritually, when it comes to taking more time for yourself, going on retreats, spending time in solitude, in meditation, in prayer you may find that you're more spiritually curious on a healing perspective, you know, not necessarily in a ninth house way of looking at different religions, different principles, different doctrines, things like that. It's more about when you go along to a retreat, for example, that is focused on healing. So whether that is you go to your breathwork retreat, a shamanic journey retreat, a yoga retreat, whatever it is, the energy of retreat comes up and it doesn't have to be any of those things, but it can be something you're more interested in. This can actually represent for some of you very long distance travel instead. So say for example, you lived in the United Kingdom. This can be where you go to Bali or you go to Australia or you travel to Los Angeles. You travel far overseas, you're going somewhere possibly alone for some of you, but you're more interested in getting quite far away from your current reality. 
So the 12th house is one of escapism and a lot of people do gap years whenever they have Jupiter go through the 12th. Not necessarily knowingly, but I have observed it. So that can be a time when you're wanting to reflect, take some time to venture out, take some time to reflect and spend more time in isolation or solitude or healing. For some of you, it can be that if you've been waiting for a treatment, a hospital treatment, a medical treatment, this can be a time when this happens because the 12th house can be hospitals and Jupiter bringing its positive energy. It can mean that if you've been waiting for treatment, this can be a time when you get it or you spend more time uh, in hospitals. If you work in hospitals, if you're a doctor, if you're a nurse or if you're a healer of any kind, maybe in a, a less traditional sense, uh, you know, you're a Reiki healer or something like that, this can be a time when you really expand on that business uh, for a lot of you, Cancer. Now, Jupiter in your chart rules your ninth house of exploring. So this can add to the message that perhaps you are going to travel more, you're going to want to study something new, maybe in the field of healthcare, maybe in the field of psychological health, maybe in the field of healing, you're you're more interested in studying these things or these topics. Jupiter, for you, Cancer, also rules your sixth house of um, health in general. So there is this repetitive theme of studying or learning when it comes to health, being more curious about health and well-being, and maybe for some of you, the mind-body connection too. Uh, with Jupiter ruling Sagittarius, which is your sixth house, and then Jupiter traditionally ruling Pisces, which is your ninth. So a lot of you could be studying something when it comes to health or well-being, or if you're in those particular industries, this could be more benefic for you. There is going to be, however, squares between Jupiter in Gemini in your 12th house of seclusion and retreat, and Saturn in Pisces, your ninth house of higher education, higher learning and what you believe in. So there could be some crisis of faith comes up. Spiritual crisis could come up in August and December. You could be questioning what it is that you believe in. You could be questioning your um, perspectives on faith, on higher meanings of religion, on spirituality. There could be some crisis of faith comes up at that point. There could also be issues potentially coming up with visas or documentation when it comes to immigrating or moving or living in a different country or studying abroad. There could be some things to work out there, perhaps due to restrictions or due to boundaries. Uh, when it comes to those different types of themes, Cancer, they could be coming up as a bit tricky in August or December. The thing about square energy is that you need to honour both elements of it. So Saturn going through your ninth house, you're more serious about potentially travelling or higher education, studying. Maybe you're in university studying for a master's degree that you're having to take really very seriously. And uh, this can also mean that you're having to travel, potentially, or it can be that you're taking, you know, spiritual matters, religious matters more seriously as well. And you have boundaries and restrictions there. And then maybe you're traveling and you're not getting as much alone time as you want. Or maybe you're finding that you're studying so hard and so committed at university that you're not getting time to decompress, you're not getting time to rest or spend some time in retreat. And you're having to figure out a way how to balance these different things with the conflicting energy in the squares. You know, uh, some of you might be really excited to spend some time alone or heal or, you know, look inward with Jupiter going through the 12th. Cancer. So let's get you a tarot card and see what comes up. It's also worth mentioning that when it comes to healing, when it comes to therapies and things like that, Jupiter going through the 12th can unite you with the best therapist for you, the best healing practice for you. So if you're looking for some type of healing, this can be the time where it aligns for you. Uh, that can be something that happens with Jupiter going through the 12th. It can also be really beautiful for spiritual experiences too. So your card is the Two of Wands. 
And I'm drawn to the word discovery in this. So I feel as though a lot of you are maybe taking a new path or taking some sort of new direction when it comes to your spirituality, your belief system. You might be considering alternative options to what it is that you've been doing when it comes to healing, when it comes to uh, looking after yourself. Some of you could be going in different directions or discovering very different ways of approaching your emotional, psychological and mental health. That's what I have for you, Cancer, and I'll talk to you soon. Hi Leo, welcome to the Jupiter in Gemini forecast for your sign. So Leo, Jupiter is going to be transiting from May of 2024 to June of 2025. Jupiter is going to be transiting your 11th house. Now, I say this every time to whatever sign is going to be experiencing this, this is quite genuinely one of my favorites in terms of transits overall. Jupiter going through the 11th house can bring you a lot of expansion, good times, luck and fortune when it comes to your social network, friendships, uh, social groups, um, the spaces that you're a part of, your social awareness, your social consciousness, the people that you're connecting with, it can even be your social media. But a lot of the time Jupiter going through the 11th house can be a wonderful time for friends. It can be a wonderful time for making friends, connecting deeper with friends, uh, creating high quality friendships with others. It can also be a time when you connect with groups that are really aligned with you. You feel really pleased and proud potentially to be a part of these groups especially as Jupiter rules your fifth house if this is a group of people that you're working with creatively or on a passion project or something that you really love Leo with Jupiter ruling your fifth house uh, it can also be a time I would say where you could maybe find love in one of these spaces or an intimate relationship in one of these spaces with Jupiter ruling the 5th and the 8th house transiting the 11th. You could find love with a friend, you could find love within uh, a community, within a social group or even online for some of you. When Jupiter transits the 11th house it forms a harmonious aspect to our descendant so a lot of the time that can bring about new relationships. And for you, it feels very friendly. So if you meet somebody, it can be through a group, through a team or something like that. Uh, but it's really positive for these different types of things, making friendships, social connections. But the 11th house is also the house of wishes. So sometimes when Jupiter goes through it, it can grant you at least one big wish, you know, something that you really do want, something that feels really good, something that feels like a dream come true. As I said before, for a lot of you, it could be a romantic or intimate relationship, or for some of you, it could be perhaps the wish of uh, being more creative, working with creative people, embracing your creative talents, uh, healing your inner child, again, Jupiter ruling the fifth house. Um, these type of things can come up when it comes to connecting with other people. Basically, your friends can help you get what you want, you know, your friend could say, hey, I have someone to set you up with if you're manifesting a relationship. Or you could say, you know, a friend could connect you to the right person you want to work with. You're really benefiting through other people. All you really have to do is show up, Leo. All you really have to do is show up to these groups, these teams, even show up online, being a social media presence. You could find if you're on social media, your followers go up or your... Um, interactions go up, you get a lot more traffic to your social media pages. It can also just be a time when you really feel very socially aware and you really care about the world and you really care about different causes and you find a lot of joy getting involved in something meaningful to you. And perhaps for a lot of you working with different people to make these type of things better. Now there is going to be two squares from Jupiter and Gemini to Saturn in Pisces in August and December. So you might notice in August that there is a little bit of clashing going on between maybe your expansion socially and perhaps what you are sharing with somebody else. So for example, this can be with Saturn going through your eighth house. 
Saturn transiting Pisces, your eighth house is where you may have financial responsibilities, you may have loans to pay, you might have debts to pay off, you might be paying off something in the long run. Say you've gotten a mortgage or you're renovating your home with your partner, you have your money tied up with other people or you have debt to pay off or something like that. Uh, or you're dealing with some financial baggage or you know something of that nature. And you're having to be responsible for these different types of things, but you have so many social invitations and groups that you're a part of and things that you want to go to, but your commitments are tied up in this uh, thing that you have. A lot of the time with this energy, you can't choose one over the other. This might be a case where you're having to figure out after a point of tension, okay, I want to go to this social event, but I'm paying off this debt. How will I, you know, budget? effectively how can I make both happen or maybe you're deciding that you're having people over to your home that you're paying off or something like that rather than having to go along to every event finding ways to make it work for you through challenge that brings your attention to the issue so that can be one way that this plays out for a lot of you Leo now for a lot of you as well Jupiter in your 11th house is going to be trining on the 3rd of June Pluto in your seventh house of relationships for a lot of you that could be a positive change in your relationship status that is making you excited about the future so maybe you're getting engaged maybe you're getting married maybe you're moving in together maybe you meet somebody that really helps expand your vision for the future through the change in your relationship status or sector it doesn't have to be romantic, it could be a business relationship as well, or it could be a very close friendship for a lot of you, Leo. Oh, your, <laughs> your tarot card just flew out, but it actually is, in this tarot deck, there's a couple of extra cards. This says Solar Eclipse as your card, which basically says big changes are coming. So I think with Jupiter going through Gemini, your 11th house, this is going to bring very exciting new beginnings, transformations. There could be a lot of changes coming up when it comes to your friendships. It's a very good time for friendships. For some of you, while Jupiter goes retrograde um, in the summer to the beginning of next year, you might, or not the summer, the autumn to the beginning of next year, you might actually reconnect with old friendships or social groups or teams that you were a part of in a very uh, destined and happy way. Leo, that's something else that this can bring. That's what I have for you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Virgo, welcome to the Jupiter in Gemini horoscope for your sign. So Virgo, if you're hoping for some professional advancement or a reputation boost or some recognition and potentially for some of you some fame, this is the transit for you. Jupiter brings luck and expansion and growth wherever it goes. And when it goes through your 10th house, particularly when it crosses your midheaven, which will be you know, your individual chart, you'll know that. It can bring some sort of peak recognition or it can bring some sort of reward for the work that you've been doing professionally. For some of you, this can be fame. For some of this, for some of you, it can be a promotion. This can make you more in favor with influential people. So your boss can be more impressed with you. You can attract the attention of VIPs for the work that you do. You can climb up the ladder. You can also, if you're self-employed and there's nobody that you're answering to, this can be that your reputation for your business grows and expands. And people want to know about you. People want to know what you're doing. They want to learn about you with Jupiter. So this can be a wonderful time for career advancement. It's a great time to start a new job. It's a great time to um, put your attention and focus into your career because you're more likely to be widely known. This can also be a status change for some of you, whether that is that you're getting married, whether it is that you're becoming you know, a doctor or you are... Uh, getting some sort of title, you're becoming a sir or a dame or whatever 
you know, it can be a title change that comes along with Jupiter going through the 10th house. I've seen that happen as well. It can give you more power and more status and more public visibility, basically. Uh, it can put you up a rank in your professional life or your social standing for a lot of you, Virgo. So there can be a lot going on for you professionally, a lot of opportunity. It is in the sign of Gemini, so there can be opportunity for multiple different things, multiple different avenues. Maybe you have to choose between two jobs. That can come up as well with Jupiter going through your 10th house in Gemini. Now, this can also be on the downside because I've, I've observed this with uh, celebrities. When Jupiter goes through your 10th house, if you get too big for your boots or you get too cocky, you can have a bit of a fall from grace as well. The downside of Jupiter energy is greed. It is overdoing it, extravagance, and this is not favorable in terms of your public image. So be mindful of that, particularly while Pluto's in Aquarius and people don't react very well to celebrity. Uh, that can be something that is um, abundantly clear with this particular transit. Now watch for August and watch for December, especially if you have a partner because they may need you more than usual and this can pull you back a little bit from your career, particularly, you know, in um, December. You might find that your partner is requiring you to be somewhere, they need you for something and you're having to step back from uh, a public presentation or the limelight for whatever reason. With Saturn going through your seventh house of partnerships and relationships, you're committing more seriously to your current partner, whether that's that you're getting married, engaged, moving into moving in together, you've more commitments to them, responsibilities with them. Some of you could have more responsibilities to them because of things going on in their life. And it's going to be squaring Jupiter in your 10th, which is the expansion and the growth in your career. So having to figure out a way to make both um, function is what you're doing. How to honour your commitment to your partnerships, your relationships, or a key relationship in your life. If it's not a romantic partner, it could be a business partner. Uh, they might not be doing so well with your growth and your reputation. You know, maybe one of your clients is saying, I see you're really busy, but I've been with you for years and you're not helping me get a, a space or you're not tending to my needs. It can basically be a case where an important person in your life is saying, I see your growth, I see your development, but I need you too. And you're having to figure out how to manage both. That can be one way that this plays out, Virgo. Um, Jupiter rules your fourth house of home and family. So for it to be going through the 10th, I feel that for a lot of you, you could potentially find yourself working with family or it could be that you find yourself working on certain goals with family or getting some sort of family fame. So for some reason, the vision of family fortunes popped into my head. Say for some of you, you're doing something publicly with your family or you are perhaps um, achieving a key goal with your family or one of your family is be family members is being recognized for something under this transit is also possible for a lot of you Virgo with this particular transit. So I'm going to pull you a tarot card for this Jupiter in Gemini transit. It's also another key date, June 3rd. Jupiter in your 10th house is going to trine Pluto in your 6th house. So I feel as though there may be a change when it comes to a colleague or someone that works for you, maybe an employee, or just a change in your routine or your workspace that is going to perhaps bring you some recognition. Maybe there have been transformations, tough changes in the workplace and people have seen how you've handled it and thought, wow, that's very impressive. Let's bring this person up a rank or two. Uh, or it could be that a space opens up in your workplace for you to take on a new position or it can be that something changes in your workplace that gives you more room to grow and expand Virgo. Huh. Your card is the Ten of Cups which is storybook ending so there's definitely going to be some sort of wish fulfillment for you professionally. I think something that feels like you've wanted it for a very long time. It's something that really matters to you so you're going to meet a very key professional goal Virgo, that is for sure. And uh, Jupiter also does rule, traditionally speaking, your sector of relationships. And with Saturn going through that house, if you are 
single. You might actually meet someone through work. For some of you, it could actually be a boss or someone in a position of authority, but you could meet somebody through the workplace uh, or someone who has a big focus on career. That is what I have for you, Virgo, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Libra, welcome to the Jupiter and Gemini transit forecast for your sign. So Libra, the area of your chart that is about to be blessed for you is your sector of travel, your sector of higher education, your relationship to religion, spirituality, what you believe in, where your faith lies, um, and also teaching. If you're a teacher, this is going to be exceptionally favorable for you. Education is going to be very favorable for you. So for some of you, that can be that you're doing a master's degree, you're getting accepted to the university of your choice. It can be that you're really enjoying the college experience. It can be that you're studying something that you really care about. Uh, for some of you, as Jupiter rules the third house and it's transiting the sign of Gemini, you could be majoring in journalism, media, education, uh, communications, things like that. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but that can just be the case for some of you if you're studying. So Jupiter going through the sector can also bring about more opportunity to travel, to take foreign trips. Whether that is that you just simply have more wiggle room to take vacations here and there, or whether it's because you're taking a sabbatical or a gap year, or you're getting to travel with work. That is a possibility as Jupiter rules your sixth house, so you may find that you're able to take more trips with work or travel opportunities come up with work. It can also be that if you're traveling, you could be traveling with neighbors, uh, siblings, cousins, aunts, uncles, extended family, as Jupiter also rules your third. So these might be the people that you're traveling with. You could also be traveling with colleagues with the sixth house, as I mentioned as well. Or some of you could be traveling for health reasons. You know, maybe you're going to get healthcare in a specific country that specializes in it or something like that. Um, that's probably for maybe one person that came across this, but that could be another way that this plays out just in different uh, examples that I can give. But really this looks for a lot of you like expanding your horizons, uh, being more interested in faith and spirituality and maybe being more connected to people from those, you know, different wakes of life, different people who have different belief systems to you, Libra, you could be connecting with them, possibly through university or through higher education, getting a diploma or studying something new. Uh, Jupiter going through the ninth house de does tend to coincide with higher study. But if it doesn't, it tends to coincide as well with a trip somewhere where you're very interested in the history of that place or you're very interested in the culture of that place but it can really help you broaden and expand your horizons to get out there and go to a foreign location or to study something new that you're very passionate about, Libra. Now, that being said, in August and December, we're going to have squares between Jupiter and Saturn. And Saturn is transiting your sixth house of work. So the truth of the matter is that when it comes to your work, when it comes to your routine, uh, you're going to be more is going to be expected of you. You're going to need to be more responsible, more accountable. You're going to need to put a lot of effort into that sector. And this could be tricky when it comes to maybe traveling. So maybe your day-to-day -day routine is very busy. You have a set schedule, you're a creature of habit, and then this opportunity to travel comes up and you really want to take it, but maybe you feel a bit uncertain about what this is going to mean for you in terms of your work, in terms of your colleagues, in terms of maybe your employees, if you have them, or just in terms of health. You know, you might want to travel somewhere, but you're needing to get the all clear from a doctor to do so or you're finding that you have an opportunity to travel with work, um, but you have responsibilities on the ground. For a lot of you, it's just a matter of making sure that you keep accountable, you keep your responsibilities when it comes to your everyday work, your everyday routines, your health, your diet, those type of things that are requiring you to be more serious and responsible with Saturn, but also there is room to grow and develop and expand spiritually, and in terms of your, you know, 
expanding on your horizons, taking that trip, taking that sabbatical, taking that vacation. For some of you, you may want to take a sabbatical, but you may find that you're worried it will impact your job or it will impact the people that you work with. And you're trying to find out a way to work with that Libra. So let's get you a tarot card for this particular transit. Jupiter loves going through the ninth house. It loves traveling, loves expanding your mindset. It can sometimes make you feel more optimistic, more positive. You can be more hopeful about the future rather than be anxious about it is another way that this can play out. It can also be really positive in terms of interactions with grandparents. The ninth house tends to rule grandparents in astrology. It can also be a time when you're just more interested in learning about the world, getting more wisdom, seeing the lesson in everything, even the tough times, Libra. So we have the Knight of Pentacles, and this really pertains, I think, to Saturn transiting your sixth house, squaring Jupiter in your ninth, because the Knight of Pentacles is where you have to be responsible for something, you have to be hardworking and take things at a slower pace and be patient with the process. So maybe for some of you, you're looking to get a work visa and you're having to be patient with that, or you're looking to work abroad and you're having to be patient with that process, or it's maybe taking quite a bit of effort and quite a bit of responsibility. If for example, with Jupiter in the ninth house, you have opportunities to travel, but maybe you want to work remotely. Maybe you want to keep your job and therefore um, you're having to sort something out and there could be a bit of back and forth or a bit of you know, some teething issues and boundaries needing to be put in place when it comes to that work, travel, uh, dynamic or relationship Libra. But that is what I have for you. I hope you have a beautiful transit and I'll talk to you soon. Hi Scorpio, welcome to the Jupiter in Gemini transit horoscope for your sign. So Scorpio, from May 2024, to June 2025, Jupiter is going to be transiting your eighth house. Now the eighth house for you is very familiar. You're the sign associated with the eighth house. It's your house basically. But this in terms of the, the themes that can play out under this particular transit, you can gain a lot of wisdom and knowledge, you know, expand your knowledge, expand your wisdom when it comes to the occult. So if you're interested in studying astrology or divination, the tarot, um, there's various other ways that this can play out. But if you're interested in something within the occult realm, this can be a time when you find yourself really engrossed in learning about it. Sometimes with the eighth house, we can find our interests peak when it comes to the taboo, the macabre, the occult, sometimes even investigations, true crime. Uh, but you can find that these are the different areas of life you're interested in. You might be studying with Jupiter. You could be studying psychology, growing your awareness on psychology, learning a lot more about it because Jupiter tends to show us what we're wanting to learn about. Uh, so these can be areas of life that you're very interested in and maybe even studying perhaps in ways that benefit you financially. So for some of you, you may find that you begin to charge for your tarot services or your astrology services under this particular transit. Now, one of the big ways this can play out for you, Scorpio, is that you can benefit a lot from other people's money. You know, your financial situation can improve because of someone else or something else. Now, whether that is that somebody leaves you a bit of money in their will which a lot of people tend to associate with the eighth house right off the bat, or whether it is that you're benefiting from a government or a spouse uh, or money that has been owed to you that you forgot about. Uh, it can be that these are the different types of people or things that you benefit from financially. So if you receive money from the government for any reason, you could find that your uh, payment is larger than it was before. If you are in a relationship with someone where you're joint financially, if their financial situation is improving, it can improve yours in turn. It can also be for a lot of you that it's that bit easier to get a loan or a grant or a mortgage or something like that. Now, the downsides of this is that obviously with Jupiter, it is a benefic and it can expand and grow where it goes. But this can also be a case where you could find yourself 
overspending or getting into debt if you're not careful. Jupiter does rule your second house, so it might be that you want to increase your spending because of money you're getting from someone or something else and you get a bit complacent and then you find yourself spending yourself into debt or something like that. So just be mindful of that. It's best to go in with this with the awareness that sometimes we do overdo it where Jupiter goes. Uh, it can also be a case that perhaps for some of you, your tax payments become larger because you're making more money or as I say, your joint financial relationship with someone or something is growing as well. So be mindful of that. It can also be a time where you expand your knowledge on a psychological in a psychological sense when it comes to intimacy and intimacy in relationships, whether that is vulnerability or any other kinds of intimacy, Jupiter can expand your awareness and your knowledge of that area of life, particularly if you do find yourself struggling with issues surrounding intimacy and close personal relationships, particularly around August and December. Because Saturn is transiting your fifth house, which is very linked to romantic relationships, sexual relationships and so you're taking those types of relationships more seriously and the square to Jupiter in the eighth can be an opportunity to grow and expand on your knowledge of these particular areas or your particular approach to that um, you can expand in your knowledge of that due to challenges in those areas. So challenges in an intimate relationship, challenges with a partnership. And for some of you, this can be because you have responsibilities to your children. So for some of you, if you are pregnant or you've given birth, this can change the dynamic in your intimate relationship. And that can be something that you're struggling with initially, just as a, an example of a square between the fifth and the eighth house. Or it can be that you're noticing as the eighth house is to do with inheritance, but inheritance is not necessarily just financial. This can be what you inherit in your bloodline. You might notice that a child of yours is struggling with something that you feel is potentially ancestral or in your bloodline or genetic. That can be another way that this plays out in August and December with that square. Now, with the fifth house in play, and Jupiter traditionally ruling your fifth house, a lot of you are going to be taking your creativity and your art more seriously and your relationship to creation in general. So you might find that you're wanting to honour your inherited talents. Maybe you had a grandparent who was a wonderful painter, you have that talent and you're more committed to honouring it within yourself. And this could be something that's really expansive for you and opens doors for you, Scorpio, particularly monetarily. I will say you could earn a bit of money through this. Uh, your inherited gifts can be you know, putting your talents on display. And also your commitment to having a lot more fun and commitment to enjoying yourself with Saturn being there, committed to healing your inner child. And that could be something that you have to work through psychologically with someone else. A lot of the time in astrology, if you see somebody going to a therapist or someone who helps them heal in a psychological sense or even an occult sense, uh, Jupiter is usually transiting the 8th or the 12th. And with Jupiter transiting your 8th, and you're ruling your fifth, a lot of you could be doing some serious inner child work. Uh, shadow work in general, but inner child work. And this could be something that's very rewarding and fruitful for you. And I think helps you potentially work through any blocks to having fun and just enjoying life, feeling joy, feeling excitement, feeling pleasure in this lifetime. I feel a lot of you could be working through those types of issues. Some of you may also have to work through addiction issues or you may have to work through gambling issues uh, or taking things to excess uh, can be another way that squares between the eighth and the fifth play out. You might have to work through something of that nature if that is there. Uh, or you might be having to help one of your children work through something if they're struggling with uh, anything in a mental health perspective as well, Scorpio. You may find that there's a little bit of clashing going on there and uh, you could learn a lot on a psychological sense. You know, the eighth house is associated with trauma. It's, an, it's uh, associated with emotional baggage. And so you may find that with Jupiter going through there, you really learn a lot and grow and gain wisdom through perhaps past experiences or wisdom surrounding your 
um, lifestyle in general, why you do certain things, why certain relationship patterns play out, etc, uh, etc. Et Another thing that is playing out that is going to be interesting for you is that on the 3rd of June, Pluto, which is your ruling planet, is going to be in your fourth house, trining Jupiter in your eighth. This may be a positive turning point when it comes to your home or living situation. The changes and the transformations going on within your home, the people that live in it, with your family, with your ability to care for yourself emotionally. With the fourth house, the trine to Jupiter in the eighth, I feel like there could be some sort of positive flow. If you have someone in your family dealing with a psychological issue or you're dealing with a loan or a mortgage issue, there can be a very positive change happening there, Scorpio. So pay attention to late May, early June of 2024 for positive changes when it comes to your home and living situation thanks to Jupiter. So let's get you a card, Scorpio. Oh, we had one pop out. So we have the Eight of Coins, which is dedication to the craft. I'm instantly, because this is the Eighth House, feeling the movie The Craft whenever I read that. So I think a lot of you could be very into the occult. Uh, some of you could be becoming self-employed in that particular area of life, or you could be very committed to your work or mastering a specific skill or talent under this transit. So that's what I have for you, Scorpio, and I'll talk to you soon. Hi Sagittarius, welcome to the Jupiter in Gemini transit for your sign. So Sagittarius, the area of life that is being expanded, the area of life that is receiving growth and good luck and good fortune is your partnership sector. So for a lot of people when Jupiter goes through their seventh house, they tend to find themselves beginning new relationships or they find themselves expanding on their current relationship. So whether that's getting engaged, getting married, but it can just simply be a very pleasant time to be with your significant other. There can be good things happening in their life, good things happening in your life that you join together and enjoy together. So if you are looking for a romantic partnership, this is one of the best times to find it. Uh, you might also find Sagittarius that if you're looking for a business partnership or a best friend, this can be a wonderful time for finding those types of relationships too. Basically, Jupiter going through the seventh favors all kinds of relationships. So you tend to find other people warm to you easier. You tend to be more popular. You tend to find yourself being more having more options when it comes to your relationships in general. So for a lot of you, if you're looking for love, you could find you have multiple options. You might have to make choices between uh, dating options if you're looking. And for those of you that are in relationships, you might be discussing options of what to do next, where to live, how many kids to have, when to get married. Those type of questions could be coming up. Or you could also be traveling more with your partner or maybe even studying or learning with your partner or entering some sort of contract with somebody significant. So again, that can be relationship wise, but it can also be romantic relationship wise, but it can also be business related as well. It's worth noting Sagittarius that Jupiter is your ruler. So if you want these types of things, you may have to be a bit more active in pursuing them yourself. You may have to put yourself out there. You might have to approach people first. But the good news is that if you do, they're more receptive and willing to hear you out or listen to you with Jupiter being in the seventh house. Some of you may even find yourself signing a contract of some kind with two people. That can happen a lot with Gemini. So you signing a contract with a pair of people, a pair of individuals. Now, in August and December, there are going to be tense energies between your relationship sector and your home sector. So there could be tension between your partner and your family. There could be a bit of tension when it comes to a living situation and a partner. Maybe that's where to live. Maybe that is how much time to spend with your family, your in-laws. Maybe that is that your partner and your family are not agreeing on something but you're setting a lot of boundaries when it comes to home and family. So that may be that you're putting some boundaries in place when it comes to your parents or when it comes to your roommates or when it comes to family in general. 
although you may have commitments to your family, more commitments than usual to your family, or you may be more committed to your home, wanting to find your forever home, wanting to lay roots. And it could be for some of you that you're wanting to settle in a home in a particular town and your partner is maybe having a lot of opportunities to travel for work and they want you to go with them and you're having to reconcile this freedom and expansive energy and potential for growth and travel and learning in your relationship sector while you have responsibilities at home. So maybe, you know, you're you're laying roots, you're starting a family, but your partner is traveling a lot for work and you're feeling a little bit left behind. Those can be ways that that plays out. So there can be a bit of tension going on between your relationship and your home and family sector. Uh, it can also be that if you're signing contracts, signing leases, there could be a bit of back and forth and a bit of tension to iron out when it comes to boundaries, parameters in the home, maybe planning permission and things like that in August and December. Uh, Sagittarius. Also, on uh, June 3rd, Pluto in your third house of siblings, of your local neighbourhood, of your extended family is forming a trine with Jupiter in your seventh house. So if you're looking for love or if you're looking for a relationship, you may actually find it in your local neighbourhood, at one of your local haunts. So your local grocery store, your local cafe, you might meet somebody in your local neighbourhood or you might find that the you know you've neighbours move in and... Maybe one of them is a romantic interest or one of them is going to be a best friend or someone that you could work with in future. There could be a significant person moves into your neighborhood or that you meet through a friend, you meet through a cousin, uh, someone that you see on a regular basis. You might meet a specific um, person through them, or through changes in their life, Sagittarius. So let's pull you a tarot card for this Jupiter in um, Gemini transit and see what comes up. Oh, the Six of Wands, congratulations. So people could actually be telling you congratulations for something. There's some recognition, something that you find successful or a milestone. So this could be with a partnership, with a key relationship in your life. Sagittarius, so be on the lookout for that. That is what I have for you and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi Capricorn, welcome to the Jupiter in Gemini transit horoscope for your sign. So Capricorn, Jupiter is going to be transiting from May 2024 to June 2025, your sixth house. So the areas of life that can be very blessed for you, your job, where you work, uh, the people that you work with or the people that work for you. Uh, this can also be your, your daily routines, your lifestyle, your health, your exercise, diet, well-being, and your fitness. It can also be pets. So there's many different ways this can work out. Firstly, in terms of health and fitness, Jupiter going through the sixth house tends to make this a priority for you. A lot of people, when Jupiter goes through the sixth, uh, they will run a marathon or they'll get very into the gym or they'll meet the right nutritionist or they will get the best information for them in terms of their physical body, their health. You know, you'll get a great doctor, you'll get a great personal trainer. You'll find yourself joining a gym that's, you know, very positive with Jupiter there. You may also find yourself meeting very exciting people through these different areas. And you might also find yourself really enjoying the colleagues that you have, the employees that you hire. It's a great time to hire people with Jupiter going through your sixth house. But you might also find that if you start a new job or you've started a new job, you really like it there. You know, you find there's a lot of joy. You find that there is a lot of um, positive experience, wisdom, you grow a lot, you might learn a lot through your job. So whether that is that they're sending you on a course or whether that is that they have a lot of, uh, they have great mentorship programs or they can teach you a lot, that tends to come up with Jupiter going through the sixth. You tend to meet people that are very, very experienced and well versed in their field when Jupiter goes through the sixth. So as I say, you could be hiring people who are very high quality to work for you. You could have co-workers that you find really optimistic, joyful, outgoing, they expand your mind. 
or it can just be that you really like these people generally and it can be that if you start a new job you like the atmosphere you find it fun you find it uh, joyful and probably quite easy to communicate with as Jupiter is the traditional ruler Capricorn of your third house. So you might find that people that you work with, you have good communication, you find that it's easier to discuss things with them, you get a lot of information, you learn a lot. And um, Jupiter also rules your 12th house though, so just be that little bit careful that you know, as much as on the majority side of things you might really like the people that you work with, there could be one person who's just a little bit different behind the scenes. So just be mindful of that with Jupiter going through the sixth, but being the ruler of the twelfth. The sixth house is enemies, the house, <laughs> the twelfth house is hidden enemies, so you might actually have someone hiding in plain sight. Just be mindful of that. It's probably like one person and the, you know, the extent of what they could do is probably quite minor, but just to mention that. It's great for your health, it's great for your fitness, it's great for your well-being in general. You might be more interested in that, particularly with Jupiter ruling the 12th from a spiritual perspective and a holistic perspective, Capricorn. Uh, you might also find yourself getting a new pet or just having very positive times with your pet. If you have one pet, you might decide it's time to get another. Or you might just notice that you're having, you know, you go traveling with a pet or you feel your pet is your best friend or something like that with Jupiter going through the sixth house. This can also expand your daily routine. So you're trying to incorporate more growth, more knowledge and just have a, an overall better quality of life with Jupiter going through the sixth. Now, there are going to be squares in August and December to Saturn, your ruler, in your third house. So when it comes to your work, particularly if you work with siblings, there could be some challenges. It can be that there's challenges with a sibling when it comes to health matters, or it can be that you're finding you have to commit a bit more to a sibling in your life or a cousin or someone in your extended family. Maybe you're wanting to spend more time with them because they're going through something or maybe you're wanting to you know, help them with something that they're experiencing. And it can also be that you just have more responsibilities to your local neighborhood, your local community, or some of you might have a writing project that you're committing to. I do feel with Saturn going through Pisces, a lot of you could be committed to a cause in your local neighborhood, your local area, something that really speaks to your soul, working with a group of people on um, something very near and dear to your heart that might be taking up your responsibilities. And this could maybe take you away from work from time to time. And it could also maybe be something that perhaps you know your responsibilities and your commitments to what it is that you're doing in your community or with a group of people or your uh, local neighborhood or with as I say a sibling or someone that you see on a regular basis your commitment to that could take you away from the growth and expansion in your career or with your health so say for example sometimes you're training for a marathon and you want to run it uh in a certain time, you're about to go out for a run, your sibling calls you and needs help with something. It can be that type of thing. You have to figure out a way to manage both areas of life, though they may clash with each other in August and December. So as I say, you could be wanting to grow and work, you could be finding that work is a great source of joy, but you have this commitment that is taking up a lot of your mental energy. And maybe that can then take up some physical energy. So you have to figure out ways to navigate that Capricorn. I also feel that on June 3rd there's going to be a really positive trine between Jupiter in your sixth house and Pluto in your second which could be very expansive when it comes to your financial situation. Perhaps you're joining a new job or you've joined a new job or there's been changes in your workplace and this is changing your finances in a positive sense. Maybe you're earning more or maybe just the confidence that you're growing and developing through your Maybe you're working out more with Jupiter in the sixth or maybe you're committing to eating better and you're feeling more confident about it. Capricorn. Let's get you a tarot card. Oh, with the ten of coins. Wealth. Uh, 
this is pretty good for career, this is pretty good for financial gain, especially with that Jupiter-Pluto trine on the 3rd of June. I feel like a lot of you could be growing your wealth, you could be laying really solid foundations with Jupiter going through the 6th house, getting really solid routines in place that are going to benefit you in the long run. Capricorn, that's what I have for you and I'll talk to you soon. Hi Aquarius, welcome to the Jupiter and Gemini transit forecast for your sign. So Gemini, Jupiter is going through from May 2024 to June 2025, a very fun part of your chart. Jupiter is going to be occupying your fifth house. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, Jupiter is about growth, it's about expansion, it brings opportunities, tends to bring a lot of something. And the fifth house is all about fun, pleasure, joy, romance, romantic love, um, creativity, art. It can also be pregnancy, having children, or just your relationship to your children in general, or childlike energy and spirit within yourself. So Jupiter going through the fifth house can be amazing creatively. You could find that you're, if you're in an artistic field or you're wanting to create in general, you get, you're getting more enjoyment out of that. You can create your masterpiece. You can find that if you're an entertainer, you do very well when Jupiter's going through your fifth house if you're in the entertainment industry. For example, for Katy Perry, when Jupiter went through Pisces back in, I think it was 2009, 2010, her Teenage Dream album, I think, ended up being one of the most, one of the best selling albums, or it had five number ones off one album or something like that. So as an artist, Jupiter going through her fifth house was very, very lucrative for her. So it can be where you feel very creative, you're making your best work, you're enjoying being in the entertainment side of things if you are. But if you're not an entertainer, you can certainly enjoy entertainment that bit more. You could attend more theatre performances, concerts, parties, events. Uh, there's a lot more opportunity to have fun. People invite you everywhere. There's opportunities to go here, to go there, to experience this. And you just get a lot of joy and pleasure from that. For those of you that are wanting to start a family, this is a pretty good time to do so. Jupiter transiting the fifth does tend to indicate pregnancy or expanding the amount of children that you have, so having another child. Because it's Gemini, you're more susceptible probably to having twins, just be mindful of that, um, or having triplets. Uh, with the Gemini energy, there tends to be more than one, so this can sometimes show up as having twins. It doesn't always have to be the case, obviously, but sometimes astrology can be very archetypal in a literal sense. But it can be a wonderful time for romance in general, so if you're single, it's a great time for dating, falling in love, feeling romantic energy in your life, and feeling romantic energy in the small things, whether that's buying yourself flowers or a really nice piece of cake or a really nice glass of wine. It's a very joyful energy. Now, Jupiter going through the fifth, the downsides, because I do have to mention this. Be careful of gambling. On the one hand, with Jupiter in the fifth, you can win pretty big. On the other hand, you can do some serious damage if you end up finding that you're wanting to do it all the time. With Jupiter, we can overdo. So be careful of gambling too much. Be careful of playing the lottery too much, taking too many risks and getting greedy. With Jupiter in the fifth uh, house. Now there are going to be squares to Saturn in Pisces in August and also in December. So from a financial standpoint with Saturn going through the second house you're more financially responsible. That can be because you're having to put your money into something specific. It can also be that perhaps you're having to learn about money the hard way for some of you. And it can also be that you maybe have more financial responsibilities and commitments in your life. But also, if it's not financial, it could be that you're feeling very committed and strongly about your values and your principles. Now, because this is squaring Jupiter in the fifth, so there's all this expansion and opportunity for fun and love and romance and creativity and pleasure and joy, uh, you may find that in August, and you may find that in December, there's a bit of a clash between what makes you happy, what's making you happy, how you're growing, and your financial situation. 
So some of you may realize that you have to budget more. You can't spend as much money on certain things if you find out that you're expecting a baby. More of your money has to go towards that. Or if you have a creative project that you're working on that's going to take you away from maybe your day job a little bit more, you could be earning less money in the interim. Uh, something like that. You're kind of figuring out how your responsibilities financially and also your priorities and your commitment to those are requiring boundaries and restrictions but also responsibility and accountability and how this is temporarily at times holding you back from the growth and expansion of your heart space feeling very joyful and very excited and happy about something so it can be that for some of you you're going on a lot of dates and you realize that it's costing a lot of money and you're having to figure out how to maybe you know spend less money and on those occasions or something like that, I just have to give the most obscure examples because it's the only way I can explain the different types of ways these houses interplay. It could be very different for you depending on your chart, but it does feel like this responsibility and having to manage your priorities in comparison to the things that are making you happy and the joy and the excitement and the pleasure in your life. Uh, Aquarius, but especially in August. Um, Saturn is going to be retrograding in your second house so you're reviewing your priorities and then Jupiter's in your fifth so it's like okay well I want to do this I want to you know do this for fun I would love to do this and then you're thinking okay can I do this financially is this is this going to work financially or is this truly aligning with my values I think for a lot of you financially speaking I would say do be careful with gambling Saturn in the second is not necessarily so great from a gambling perspective Jupiter in the fifth can be where you overdo it and you can get yourself into issues so just be mindful of that Aquarius also to note June 3rd Pluto in your sign is going to trine Jupiter in the fifth particularly if Pluto is hovering around your ascendant um, be mindful that for a lot of you this could be a pregnancy because Pluto on the Ascendant can change your physical body. Jupiter in the 5th can be pregnancy. For others of you, it can be a case where the personal changes that you're making, the personal goals that you're making, you're figuring out what truly makes you happy. You know, you're figuring out who you are, what you want. Those things are changing. And around this time, you might think, okay, I I'm having a strong intuitive sense that this is going to make me happy right now. And what a beautiful thing to know. So let's see what we have for you, Aquarius. Oh, we have the Wheel of Fortune. So chance, life cycles, good luck. Well, of course, you know, the Wheel of Fortune is actually the Jupiter card. It's associated with Jupiter and Capricorn, but it's Jupiter nonetheless. So I feel like for a lot of you, there could be a significant life cycle in this transit, whether that is that you're expecting your first baby, whether it is that you fall head over heels in love with a soulmate, whether it is that you do win the lottery, <laughs> which could be the case, Aquarius with that card. Um, I feel like you're going to feel with this Jupiter through the fifth transit that you have a significant win or lucky break. But that is what I have for you and I'll talk to you soon. Hi Pisces, welcome to the Jupiter in Gemini horoscope for your sign. So Pisces, Jupiter from May 2024 to June 2025 is going to be transiting your fourth house. So in terms of expansion, in terms of growth and luck, it's happening in your home and family sector. So from a real estate perspective, for a lot of you, this could be buying a home this could be purchasing a property, this could be expanding, renovating, uh, this could be maybe getting a home that is a bit bigger than you expected with Jupiter. This certainly happened to me the last time Jupiter was in my fourth house. It was whenever I was in university. I was expecting to move home because I had nobody to move in with in my final year and two of the guys from my year, I ran into them coincidentally in a shopping mall and they asked me to move in with them. We found a house. The house was huge for a student house. I think there was only three of us. I think it had about six bedrooms. I mean, this was a big house. This was <laughs> three stories high and we got it for a really good deal. But I just, I remember how big it was. And the room that I had was two rooms knocked together. It was huge. 
Uh, so very Jupiter in the fourth house and just totally chance by chance that I ran into them. So Jupiter can bring you luck and blessings when it comes to home moving, uh, finding somewhere new to live, or if you're not planning to move, it can be renovating, expanding your property or adding something onto your property or just redecorating in a way that feels good. It can also be moving abroad as it is Jupiter. So some of you may have an opportunity to move abroad. Uh, or move for work with Jupiter being the ruler of your 10th house. Jupiter does rule your first, so you may buy your first home individually as well. But this can also be expansion of your family. So maybe some of you are starting a family, maybe someone marries into your family, there's a birth in your family, um, you form your own family, it can be an expansion of your family unit or it can be that you take on roommates or you find roommates that you really like and they can be Jupiterian, they can be from a different country, they can be people that you know through education or something like that, uh, Pisces. But it can be a time when you really expand with property, you expand with your family as well. It can also mean that you want to learn more about your lineage and your heritage and where you come from and your family tree. Uh, with Jupiter ruling your first house, you may be more interested in who you are when it comes to your family, the role that you play in your family. And um, I also think with Jupiter ruling your career sector, you could find yourself working from home that little bit more. And pay careful attention to December of 2024 in particular, because Mercury will be in your career sector, forming a mutual reception with Jupiter in your home sector and Mercury will be retrograde in that sector. So there may be some goals that you're able to achieve professionally because of this, that in some way may benefit your home or you may be achieving these goals from your home. But there can be more opportunities to work from home or maybe renovate your home office or your home space. Maybe you're going to be uh, creating an office in your home that you haven't had before or a studio or bringing your business to your home, operating from home. You know, if you're a nail technician, you might open up your own salon in your garage or something like that. That can be a case. Now, interestingly for you, the squares that are coming up between Saturn and Pisces and Jupiter in, the, in your fourth house, Gemini, that are happening in August and December. So Saturn being in your first house, you're very much in the energy of being more responsible, more committed, more dedicated and in particular having more boundaries personally and you're better at putting a bit of limitation on yourself with Saturn in your first house. Now you may find that if you're expanding your home or expanding your family you're having to figure out ways to take time for yourself to commit to your own personal goals. So say you have a goal, a health goal perhaps with Saturn in your first house that you're working on. This means you have to go to the gym a certain amount of time a week uh, a certain amount of times a week and you're having builders in your house to renovate, you're having to figure out how you can do both. You're having to figure out how your commitments to your self and your well-being are merging against your renovations or your property matters. And uh, I think for a lot of you with Saturn going through the first house, you're making personal commitments and this could be to a mortgage, this could be to having a family. Saturn going over the ascendant sometimes can be starting a family or committing more. So a lot of you may find that you're you're figuring out how to have more time for yourself, how to keep your relationship with yourself solid, how to commit to you and what you need and your personal goals and your personal needs and even your body. You know, you could find yourself buying a home and you're realizing the responsibility and the accountability that it takes. Or as I say, you could be starting a family and realizing the physical toll that that's taking on you for a lot of you. Uh, so it's important to realize that these energies, they can't be completely harmonized, but you can figure out how to prioritize both and work with both of the energies. Pisces. Also June 3rd, Pluto in your 12th house is trining Jupiter in your 4th. And I feel like a lot of you are sort of expanding on healing from something in a family matter. So forgiving somebody or forgiving something from the past or realizing how much you've grown spiritually, emotionally, mentally on a matter. And there could also be something from behind the scenes that helps you when it comes to your home and family situation. So something may come out of nowhere, a change comes out of nowhere, or so it would seem. But in reality, the, the work that you've been doing on yourself emotionally 
behind the scenes is going to help you have better relationships, I think, with your family or with home or property matters. So say, for example, you've been working through something with a therapist and you realize that you've been able to forgive a tense dynamic with somebody in your family or even a roommate and you you notice around that time that the relationship is a lot better. So let's get you a tarot card, Pisces, and we'll see what comes up for you with Jupiter in the fourth house. Oh, so we have the King of Wands. Somebody else got the King of Wands. I can't remember who it was. If you watch for your sun, moon and rising, you might find it. Somebody else definitely got the king of wands. I think it may have been Gemini. I'm not so sure. But the king of wands for you with the fourth house, this is where you are a natural born leader. This is where you feel successful. So perhaps with Jupiter going through the fourth house, you're able to invest more in your own business from home, maybe work from home more. Uh, feel more successful. It could also indicate a fire sign person in your life or in your home being significant. So an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, uh, emphasis on Aries with this card being prominent in your home. This could be someone that you hire to help you with your home, someone that moves into your home, uh, or it can just be that you're really feeling like you're getting things done and you're taking the lead when it comes to home and family matters, Pisces. That's what I have for you and I'll talk to you soon.